Hey everybody, it's John Wood over at TechUnplugged.com. Um, in the mail uh, today came my um, Verizon Samsung uh, LTE hotspot. Uh, about a month ago I did a review of the Pantech USB modem, which is this device right here. and I've been using it for about a month. Um, but I like the ability of this being um, in a bag or something and I have internet connectivity and I can use it for other devices like my iPad and things of that nature. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you speed tests of the different devices. Uh, first off, I'm going to put the um, Pantech in to give you a base uh, speed because this still is the fastest device. Um, I also have a Thunderbolt, which I will um, connect to as well to show you the speeds off of that as well, the hotspot functionality off of it. Uh, one thing I have to say about the Thunderbolt, if you're thinking about getting it, is you need the extended battery. Uh, unless you're going to charge it sometime during the middle of the day, um, plugged in at your desk or in a car, because uh, you it's impossible to go the entire day on this phone, especially if you're in an LTE market. Um, LTE will always be on; it's going to chug away at the battery. Uh, the only flaw with the extended battery is this incredibly chunky piece sticking out the back. Now they give you a new back uh, cover for it to accommodate the extra size of the battery. Um, with this though, I can go the entire day, but uh, I'm starting to call this the hunchback phone now because of this huge battery. But the speeds are incredible on this. Alright, so one of the cons about the Pantech that I have is that it takes quite a bit of time from plugging it in to go to usable. As you just saw, it took that extended period of time, probably about a minute or 30 seconds. Um, the other problem that I have with it is um, I travel between White Plains, New York, and New York City about a half an hour, 40 minute train ride, depending on um, if it's express or whatever. And for some reason right now, the modem just completely dropped out. And here we are, connected back again. It might have been doing an update of some sort. So anyway, um, if this drops out of 4G and goes to 3G, uh, I've never seen it automatically go by itself from 3G back to 4G again. I've had to unplug the modem, plug it back in, in order to get 4G back up and going. Um, sometimes I can go the entire trip between White Plains and New York City and never drop out once. Sometimes it happens a couple of times. Um, and every time I've talked to anybody at Verizon concerning this in the uh, tech support, um, they tell me that's what you have to do. It won't go back up to 4G by itself. If they up fix that in an update, it will be great, but that's an annoyance. So I'm going to open up Safari and go to Speed Test. If I had a working connection from here says I'm connected and I'm not connected that's the first time it's ever done that alright there we go we're pulling up speed tests and that's the only thing I have plugged in. I don't have a network cable uh, plugged in. Airport's turned off, so this is my only connection. So I'm gonna. I'm here in New York, so I'm gonna test off of the optimal online connection in New York City. And these are numbers I routinely get here. The highest I think I've ever gotten is 28.9. Uh, on the download side and I usually get somewhere about seven or so for the upload side. It's still decent speeds. I mean th these are incredible speeds. I'll run the test one more time. And 20 is a little bit on the slow side. One more time.
All right, there we go. So on average, we're about 23.25. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, pull out the the Pantech, which I just did, and you notice that it shows that it disconnected. And I am going to remove the SIM. from the device. So that's the 4G SIM. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into the Samsung uh, hotspot. And the funny thing is is that um, the weight of the two units are almost identical. Um, even though one has a battery and one doesn't, they're pretty close. Uh, and I believe you can get about two and a half hours to three hours uh, on this. Um, actually, about three and a half hours, I think it is. Um, best case. Um, so I'm going to turn it on. And it's booting up. And I'm going to wait for it to come up, and then I'll turn my Wi-Fi on. Now the Samsung modem does have, um, it'll fall back to CDMA if it can't connect to an LTE network, so you're not lost if you roam out. Same thing with the Pantech, the Pantech will also go back. So, the unit's now on, uh, this is the Wi-Fi light letting me know Wi-Fi is on, <clears throat> and this is the uh, 4G light telling me I'm connected to an LTE network. So, I am going to turn my airport on. And I'm going to pick that network. And right now it's picking Nebula, which is a airport in here. And let it show me uh, other networks in the area. And here is the Samsung. So I'm going to click on that and connect to it. All right, we're connected. I'll refresh this page. and we'll run a speed test. Now, the one thing I like about it is that it does give me the ability to just have this tossed in a bag and on and using it uh, with the laptop and other devices. Only problem is, as you can see here, the speeds I'm getting off this thing are abysmal. Literally, I mean, they're, they're horrid. And this is the slowest I've ever had on this yet. The upload's faster than the download, which is amazing. We'll try it one more time. I mean, this is beyond horrid. When I was testing this out before, I was getting speeds in the 13, 15 uh, megabit range, mega, uh, uh, bit range. but the problem is, is that that's half of what I'm getting with my USB modem, which I didn't like. And now seeing these speeds, which I shouldn't be, here it goes, it's picking up now. So, there, I really, I mean, you saw the test before. I was getting between 20 and 25, 26. I get usually around 28 in the area. And, you know, now I'm barely able to get the 14 out of it. Uh, and 14, 15 is the best I've seen on this yet. I'll do one more test. Just to rule out that the first one was a, a, a fluke. I'm getting 13 again. So I'm literally getting half the speed. Um, from the Samsung um, than I would from the uh, the Pantech. Um, do it one more time. So I'm pretty much guaranteed of returning this. Um, I'll stick, you know, it'd be nice to have the hotspot functionality, 
but I'm not going to pay all this money to be able to get half the speed I should be getting. Um, and I don't know if it's a limit in the device itself that it maxes itself out of 15 or uh, something with the antenna system inside it where I'm only going to get a half the speed of whatever is around me. Um, here in White Plains, I've always got the best speeds around 28. In the city, I usually get somewhere around 15 or so. Um, so I'd hate to walk into the city and get 7 megabits out of it. Uh, I know that tomorrow when I travel into the city. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off uh, this device now. And I'm going to turn on my Thunderbolt hotspot. Now if I use speed tests on the Thunderbolt, I get speeds of somewhere in, in the 30 megabit range. Uh, which is incredible in itself, but when you go to a hotspot, I guess it limits uh, that data transfer. You don't get the full 30 megabits. Um, you get less than what the hotspot gives you. So I have it turned on now, and I'm going to go up here and pick it. As soon as it comes up, there's the Thunderbolt. So I'm going to select that. It also takes a little bit of time for it to find it, but I'm connected now. I'll refresh the page. And I'll do a test. Do New York. All right, we'll do it one more time. I mean, I'm getting better speeds using my Thunderbolt than using the Samsung um, device, which is primarily, primarily made just for uh, data. Um, you would think the Thunderbolt would be slower. In this case, not. So... And right now it's having, I guess, speed test is having some problems. It's happened a couple times where doing the uploads, it's not coming back. I'll refresh the page again one more time and we'll just do it from scratch. And the plan that I have on my data service is um, a 10 gig which is $80 a month. Um, the Verizon hotspot, I believe it caps out at 2 gig, and then you pay over the charges from that point. So it doesn't make sense for me to use this primarily as my data connection because I chug almost through the 10 gigs in a month, uh, connecting the client servers and things of that nature remotely uh, while I'm on the road. So there you have it. That's the speed from the Thunderbolt, um, which is about the same as the Samsung hotspot, if not sometimes a little bit faster and a little bit more reliable when it comes to speed. Um, the only thing that will move me maybe to stay with the Samsung will be if I keep my 4G connection while I'm traveling or if it drops to 3G that it comes back up by itself, which the Pantech never does. Um, I also might return this and wait for the... Um, the other MiFi device to come out. Um, which I'm hoping would have better speeds than this. I'm pretty disappointed that this is so slow from Samsung. Um, that's it. Um, if I get any updates uh, from Verizon, I'm going to give them a call and ask them why this is so slow. If there's something I'm missing, I'll update um, this site, the website that you're looking at, whether it be under YouTube or Vimeo or on my own website, techunplugged.com. Um, but that's it. I hope this was informative enough, informative enough for you to make a decision which way to go, whether it be the USB modem, a dedicated hotspot, or uh, just using the hotspot on like a Thunderbolt. Um,